The Gifts at Author's Crowning When Arthur of the Twelve Battles had crushed the Saxons at Baden Hill, so that they came not west again for a generation, the kings of the Britons gathered together and agreed to have him as high king over them, for until that time he had only been Dux Balorum, the war leader of Britain. And being good Celts, they went away then for a year and a day to prepare. And as they had competed during the warfare to be first and fiercest in the battle, now they competed to find and bring the best possible gifts to Arthur at his crowning. The kings of the south and west, who had gold on their lands, sent men to work to mine it. And from this gold were made great two-handled cups, twisted torques, and heavy gold arm rings. The men of the north decided instead to raid for their gifts. They sent raiding parties into the Pictish lands, and these came back with long swords carved with strange runes, with twisted ivory hilts, and heavy silver chains to wear about the neck. The kings of the south and east, who were still Roman in name and nature, decided instead to shop for their gifts. They sent agents abroad, and these came back with bales of many-colored silks from the distant eastern lands, great two-handled jugs of the red Falernian wine, and high-couraged Spanish stallions. And at last the day arrived. One by one the marvelous gifts were brought into the hall, while Arthur stood and watched, tree tall in his robe of purple and amber, until all the place seemed to be full of gold and jewels and silk and splendid weapons. And at last, when all was done, he asked if anyone else there had brought him a gift before he chose and rewarded the person who had given him the best gift of all. And out of the crown there came a young boy, with his hair dark as the raven's wing, and a small harp in his hand. Lord King, he said in a high, clear voice, I have made a song for you, and I ask your leave to sing it now. Sing, said Arthur. And the boy sung. The song that he sang was the tale of Arthur's twelve battles. And although every man in the hall knew that story as well as they knew the lines in their own palms, Yet so beautifully made was the song, so splendid the linkages and the images, that everyone there listened with hard-held breath until it was over. And at the end they all sighed together like a great wind through the hall. And Arthur, who had listened as intently and sighed as loud as any man there, asked the boy now what was his name. And the boy said that his name was Taliesin. Well, why Taliesin? asked Arthur. When everyone else brought me gold and jewels and silks and splendid weapons, did you come bearing only words? Lord King, said Taliesin, silk crumbles, steel rusts, and gold is lost in the ground. But I bring you the gold of the bards, which is their praise, and that shall last as long as the earth stands and men remember our tongue. And Arthur smiled, and he said, You have given me the best gift of all. And he gave Taliesin a gold ring for his finger and seated him beside him at the feast that night and in after days he made him his bard. And many and wondrous were the adventures that those two had together in after times. But that is a story for another day.